So I find the easiest way for me to do this is to create a colour swatch. So here I've determined all the colours I can see within the image. Uh, this way I can easily use this to match the colours I need without spending all my time testing every shade of pencil or some drawing. I've done a quick sample of each of them and I've placed the number and colour of the pencil beside them here. I've matched them as closely as I could with my pencils and as you can see there are a lot of pinks, browns, greys and blacks in there. Uh, some of these colours I'll only be able to achieve through layering and I'll talk you through how to do that within this video. I use a combination of Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and Polychromos. These are my favourite pencils to work with. I use the Luminance pencils primarily for the base layers as they are quite smooth and milky and the Polychromos are great for applying those crisp details on top. So they, they layer really nicely on top of one another. It's always a good idea to start layering them at this stage to get a better understanding of how the two colours will blend with one another. So uh, putting aside a little extra time to do a few layering and colour swatches can be really helpful when you are working on your drawing. It can also help act as a warm up and get you into the right frame of mind about, about how you're going to tackle certain areas. I'll be putting a list of the materials and colours I'll be using in the description below. Uh, particularly if you are looking to invest on some high quality and light fast pencils as these can really make a significant difference to the final outcome especially as uh, certain brands can be more scratchy or the colours won't be as vibrant as you need them to be and if you're looking to start selling your original artwork it's really beneficial to think about the quality of the materials you're working with especially as you want them to be light fast, which essentially means that they won't be affected as much by the ultraviolet light. So you don't really want your drawings to discolour over time. I wouldn't normally do these in such detail, but I thought for the purpose of this video, it'd be really beneficial for you to see what I do when I'm starting a new piece. It can be particularly helpful if you have multiple drawings on the go. So if your colours get mixed up, you can easily, easily come back to this and work out which pencils you were using for each drawing. So here I'm just applying a base layer using a French grey and then I'm going to be blending some burnt sienna over the top and then I'm finally going to darken it with some black as well. Now I'm applying the burnt sienna to give it a warm brown glow and then I'll be going in with my black pencil to create those darker shadows while still have that warmth come through from the sienna. I'm just adding a bit of black now to really darken those shadows. I'm just going to add a bit more sienna in just to bring out those warm brown tones. So here you can see the colour of the shadows in the nostril that I'm trying to achieve. I've also done some layer swatches earlier for the pink areas and some of the light grey tones coming through in the highlighted areas of the nose as well. <laughs> This can probably be the trickiest part because no matter how well your colouring skills may be, if the initial drawing isn't proportionate, all that hard work will result in a piece that you aren't satisfied with in the end. So you probably think I just grab my pencil and paper and just throw down an easy sketch done easy onto the fun part. Uh, the sketch part does not come easy to me at all. Um, I spend a lot of time trying to get this part right before I move on to any of the next stages. Um, so here you can see my initial sketch. It's not perfect, the sizing is a little off and when drawing I do have a tendency to angle my paper so it can sometimes throw off the proportions and the perspective a little. Um, so to correct this, I actually used tracing paper. 
I think it's probably one of the best tools you can use. Uh, there are some people who can perfect their drawing without any need for it, and I salute their skill, uh, but sadly I am not them. Uh, so the way in which I use it is I'll do my initial sketch. So here I've put down an initial rough outline just to get the idea of the shape of the nose or what I'm drawing. And then I go over it with a slightly darker and softer pencil and just define any of the shapes that I can see. Uh, so here I'm just defining the circular um, shapes in the nostrils. So now that I've completed my outline and defined any of the lines and shapes I want to keep, I'll then start to transfer my line work onto a sheet of tracing paper. Uh, here I've cut some pieces to size, they're slightly larger than my drawing, and during this stage I will alter any angles and sizes that need correcting. If the nostril is too big, I can make it a fraction smaller. If the angle of a line is slightly too harsh, I can adjust this whilst being able to see the differences I've made from the original sketch. Each piece I trace, there will be a slight alteration and I will always have the opportunity to recover any areas that I felt I drew better before. Um, so it saves me from starting from scratch again. Plus, I think it's wonderful to see the developments of your drawing as well. I think it's a great way of doing this because you always have the original sketch available to you. Uh, using a rubber can erase areas that you won't be able to recover and sometimes trying to redraw, redraw them doesn't always equal the same result. It can sometimes take a few attempts before you get an outline you are 100% happy with but I found over time I haven't had to do this as much. So I have seen a vast improvement in my skills since approaching my art in this way, and rather than erasing my mistakes, I've learned and have improved upon them. I also use this process for constructing compositions, so I'll do sketches, trace elements, and then explore different areas they could go by moving them around quite easily. You can use products such as Trace Down to speed the process along. Um, you can get it in chalk and graphite, so if you are drawing onto a darker surface, it is ideal for that. Or you can use a light box, uh, but for the purpose of this video, and what I tend to use more often than not, um, is tracing paper, so I thought I'd stick with that for now. So here we have my final sketch on a small sheet of tracing paper. Uh, this is the outline I am most happy with. Um, it's taken me about five attempts, but that's, that's okay. Um, I'm going to then transfer this onto my final piece of paper and I'll be use, that I'll be using for my drawing. Um, so I'll, be, I'll have to flip it and redraw the line so that it's the uh, correct orientation as you don't really want your uh, drawing back to front. Uh, and then I'm going to start adding some colour. <laughs> So I've got the image that I'm going to draw here and I also have a basic outline of my drawing that I transferred onto my paper earlier just here. Uh, so the first thing to make sure is, is that you have a scrap of paper or piece of card to rest your hand on. Uh, even though coloured pencil can be a bit difficult to remove, it can adhere to the oils on your skin and transfer across the surface of your drawing. Uh, so just using a simple piece of paper can prevent this and also protect your paper from discoloration from the oils in your skin. I also have at, have at hand my colour swatch in case I need to test any further colour combos or work out the best pencil to use whilst I'm drawing. And I also have the most important part. Um, sorry, I'm, ah, I can't pick them up at the moment. Uh, bear with me. Ooh. Uh, so here I have my pencils. Um, yeah, uh, self-explanatory on those ones. Um, I tend to put them in a little pot uh, just because um, I'm always knocking them off the table and it keeps them neat and accessible. Um, even though when I'm drawing I, I still don't tend to put them back in the pot. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I also have these pencil extenders uh, my, by Derwin. Uh, these are super handy when your pencils become really small. Uh, that way, because they, uh, they can be really difficult to work with when they get to that size. Uh, they come in a pack of two sizes, which is great because the luminance pencils are slightly larger than the polychromos. 
uh, so you can see how tiny it is, quite difficult to work with. So these can these can be really useful whilst I'm drawing. Uh, so I use that one for the luminance and that one for polychromos. I also have my Mars Lumograph pencil. Uh, this, sorry, this one's a little faded. I'll see if I can find one that you can see. Uh, so yeah, uh, I keep my uh, light pencil, 2H pencils, um, just at hand, just in case I need to redraw um, anything or add a guide that I can easily erase. Uh, yeah. Now I want to show you my favourite tool. Um, this is my mechanical eraser. Uh, get one, <laughs> just do it. Uh, they are incredibly useful. A uh, coloured pencil can be really tricky to remove, and if uh, you really bugger up um, any of your drawing, uh, this grey will pretty much uh, save your day. Uh, you can also trim it to a point and create soft highlights. Uh, in addition, I have my standard rubbers, my hard rubber, which I use to remove any large lighter areas. Uh, or pencil lines and my soft rubber, rubber which is ideal for lifting pigment from the paper. Uh, I've got my Faber-Castell sharpener, it has three separate sharpening holes um, because no pencil is the same thickness sadly, uh, so this can be really handy just for any of my pencils. So that's that one. I also, uh, I also use a soft brush. Um, I just like it. it. It's quite soft and it feels nice. It's also quite handy to just to brush away any eraser, debris or sky hair because it gets everywhere <laughs> and uh, fragments of pencil dust that can build up on the paper. So it's like really soft. I like it. I also recently invested in a slice tool. It seems a lot of artists are using it at the moment and I wanted to see what the fuss was all about. Um, it's great in certain situations. You have to apply a lot of layers down otherwise you're going to be end up scraping the paper off. Um, I might use this during the drawing or I might save it for another video down the line. Um, I'll see how it goes. Uh, so let's get started. Preserving your highlights and applying your base colours. Uh, both of these are put down side by side, uh, so using your colour swatch you'll need to pick the lightest shades that you have chosen for each section. Uh, these colours will act as your highlights. Uh, so I've chosen a Luminance 902, which I'll be using for the darker highlights in the shadows. I've also got the Luminance 872, um, so I'll be using that one as an undertone for those like chocolatey and pinky browns in there. I've got my Polychromos 230 which will act as my lightest highlight. Uh, this one will also be used um, for the whitest areas of the fur. It will act as a soft shadow and help to make the paper appear brighter. And lastly I'll be using a Polychromos 132 which is a very soft pinky colour, so it's a very flesh-like colour. And that will be used on all the pink patches on and around the nose there. So to begin I'm just going to start with those beautiful pink areas and focus on this pink area at the top left of the nose here. So I'm going to be holding uh, my pencil very very gently and pressing very very softly I'm just going to create little circular strokes to get an even coverage over the area I want to cover. So I'm just being very very gentle here I don't want to press down too hard otherwise I'm not going to be able to apply any further layers on it and I also want to keep that colour really really light because these are essentially going to be my pink highlights. Uh, so then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other shades. Um, so I'll be uh, using a light grey um, for my white areas and then the light browns I'll be adding in as well. So here I've completed my base layers and mapped out all of the highlights that I want to preserve. I have however marked out the areas where the nostrils are using a light brown. 
Um, I've done this primarily to amplify their shapes, so when it comes to the next stage, I know the areas I'll need to darken and those I need to keep light. Um, I'm just going to bring it a little closer because the layers are so light, just so you can see where I've put down pencil and the areas I've left. Uh, you can see at this stage that the pencil is super grainy, and that's a good thing at this stage. Uh, having the paper come through can be an asset. And it also means that you haven't pressed too hard and you've preserved that important tooth where more layers can be applied. Uh, this stage can look a little ugly. It can sometimes be difficult not to rush and start applying more layers and darkening it. The contrast is going to be your final stage and this itself takes time to build up gradually. It's the stage where you start to see your drawing really take on life. Um, hold off for now as I'm going to show you how to map out your shadows in the next stage. So now we've got a better idea of where our colours are going to go, we can start to build these up and define our shadows. A method I find easiest is to pick out the darkest areas in your image, but use your medium valued pencils. Um, so the areas that are almost black with no defining features. So you'll want to choose a medium brown if it's quite a warm undertone, or a grey or a blue if the area is quite cold. You don't want to be pressing down too hard at this stage, otherwise you will damage the tooth of the paper or burnish the paper. And you won't be able to add any more layers to that. Uh, you're just given the impression of shadow at this stage, uh, you'll be able to deepen these areas at a later part. Uh, so just do gentle rotations with your pencil, pressing softly to get an even coverage, the same way you did when you were adding your highlights. You'll start to see form and shape in your image when you do this. Uh, some shadows will be spread over wider areas and others will be concentrated to smaller areas. Um, you don't want to cover up your highlights too much. Uh, there will be moments where you'll be working into them and softly blending. Um, at the tip of the nose, for example, I've added a deeper pink over the highlights, but have left small patches where the light hits them. Uh, this will help to achieve a natural gradient of light from highlight to shadow. So you're doing this very, very gradually. I should probably mention my reasoning for darkening the nostrils at this stage, um, despite telling you not to do that. Um, in some areas, shadows will be almost black. Uh, so these areas have little to no detail except a uh, faint colour cast to them. Uh, the nostrils are quite sharp compared to other areas of the nose and as these are the darkest areas of the entire image I have decided that I'm going to put down a few more layers uh, so they act as a guide for the rest of my drawing. Uh, no other area of the nose should be darker than this area apart from maybe a few little bits in the centre. Uh, this is usually the reason why a lot of artists tend to start with the eyes of a portrait as they have both the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights in them. Uh, so they act as a wonderful guide when developing the mid-tones throughout your drawing. So now I've mapped out all my shadows, I'm going to start defining small areas of detail. I want to do it at this stage before I start applying any further layers, because there are a lot of highlights that I want to preserve in there. I want my base layers, my initial pinks, greys and browns, to peek through into the top layers, so I don't want to start covering up all the hard work I've already put into them. It's also important to preserve these areas because it gives your drawing definition, and contrast. If your highlights are too dark then it can sometimes make the drawing look a little flat. It's very similar as to when you don't deepen your shadow areas enough and that can also make your drawing look a little bit flat. You want your shadows to be definitively darker than your mid-tones otherwise there won't be any significant separation between the two and they will just kind of blend into one another. You want your drawing to pop um, so you want those shadows to be very deep or even black. Uh, this is important in both coloured pencil, um, but especially in graphite. 
um, which relies solely on contrast to bring depth and life into your drawing. So at the moment I'm just adding a little bit more brown shadow to this area using circular motions uh, which helps to create a little bit of texture before you go in and start really defining those shapes in the nose. It's important to have a sharp pencil when you're working on the detail stages. Having a sharper pencil tip can give you much more precision and control as to where you're putting down pigment. Um, as you can see, my pencil is a little flat from the shadow stage um, before, so I'm going to give it a little sharpen before I apply any further details. When you are defining your details, it's important to consider the colour you are using. You don't want to start adding dark greys and blacks to areas of brown, and you don't want to start adding too much pressure or shades that are too dark. At this stage, you are simply mapping out your details and giving the impression of where they are, um, so that at the later stage, when you are applying more contrast and deepening those shadows, you know which areas to preserve and which areas to add to. For my brown details, I'm going to use my Burnt Sienna, which is a very warm brown, and pressing very lightly, map out the structure of these small spots on the nose. You just want to press softly at this stage, so if you do make any mistakes, you can easily use a rubber or a mechanical eraser to just lift the pigment off the paper. The structure of these spots are very complex, uh, much in the same way you are drawing hair, rather than drawing every strand of hair you see, you're simply going to look at how the shapes change. Um, so you're drawing a three-dimensional subject onto a two-dimensional piece of paper. So as the spots sit across the nose, they curve and distort in shape. The spots on the centre of the nose are quite large and defined, and as they move to the top of the nose, these spots start to stretch and shrink and elongate. When applying detail to the highlighted areas, you'll want to press even more softly. Uh, within the highlights, you can see less detail. So as you are following the areas you've mapped, the highlights and shadows, you'll need to apply varying pressure when picking out these shapes. Uh, this stage can take time and patience, so don't rush it. In a moment, I will talk you through how to remove pigment from the paper when you go a little bit too dark with your pencil. Uh, using one of my favourite tools. So here you can see I've mapped out all of those little spots in the nose, uh, pressing very lightly with my 283 Burnt Sienna pencil. I've also gone in with my 571 Luminance pencil and done the exact same thing for the pink areas as well. I have slightly blended the two together um, because those pinks and browns do overlap slightly in certain areas of the nose. I have made a few errors on the tip of the nose, so I'm going to show you how I correct those using my mechanical eraser. These spots here are a little bit too small, so I'm going to lift all the pigment from the paper so that I can make these spots larger and lighter, as I've also gone a little bit too dark on them as well. You don't have to press too hard with this as the mechanical rotation of the rubber is going to do all the work for you. I'm just using gentle tapping motions to lift the pencil. If I press too hard, then I run the risk of damaging the paper beneath. Do be careful if your rubber does get a little bit too small um, because the metal that surrounds it can sometimes damage the paper. Now I'm going to go back in with my sienna and redefine the outline of those spots, making them a little bigger and stand out more on the tip of the nose. So I'm just lightly outlining or re-outlining uh, the little spots, the larger little spots from my reference photo here on the nose. Just mapping these little shapes out again. I'm also doing a little bit of shadow just on the bottom left of these little spots as well because where the light is coming in from the top right it's casting a little shadow on the bottom there so it just gives them a more three-dimensional appearance. 
and helps to also uh, blend in that area that you've just rubbed out as well because you don't want to have a really obvious uh, shape where, the, where you've used your rubber to rub out the little area that you did wrong. So you want to blend that back into your drawing. I also like to use my soft rubber just to lift some of the pencil from the paper and lighten any areas that are slightly too dark. And it can make line work a little more subtle and help blend shadows into those highlights a little more naturally. Again, I'm just doing soft little tapping motions, uh, lightly pressing my eraser against my paper just to lift and lighten that pencil pigment from the paper. You can also use uh, putty rubbers as well. And I'm just going to gently brush all those little bits of rubber away. So I'm going to show you how to easily create the illusion of fur around the nose. Using my sienna pencil again, so I'm avoiding going too dark, um, I'm going to create gentle little strokes. Now the hair around this area is very short, so you want to keep those strokes also very short. Think about the direction of the fur rather than your interpretation of the direction it should be going in. Not all the fur on the face follows the same direction, so you will need to really focus on your reference photo and determine which way they are laying across the face, particularly around the nose, as there are a lot of curves in this area. Occasionally, there will be some strands that gently curl upwards and defy the rest of the fur in that area. Fur doesn't always lay straight, so giving fur a gentle curve or a flick can give it a more natural appearance. This can sometimes be caused by the curvature of the face and the wrinkles in the skin and cause the hair to arc as it grows over these little lumps and bumps on the skin. So skin isn't completely flat. So you don't want to just draw straight lines. You want to give the impression of them growing over a three dimensional surface. I will do a future video that focuses more on creating more natural looking fur, um, but I just wanted to offer a little introduction for now. So as you can see from my drawing so far, it is looking a little flat and lifeless. All the important bits are down, so I've got my details, the shape, the shadows and all the highlights. With this next part, I'm going to show you the importance of developing those layers and building contrast in your drawing. So this part, I'll just be gradually darkening those mid-tones and shadows. It can also be the part that can take the longest. Sometimes this stage can take multiple layers until you develop the contrast that you're aiming for. I'm going to fall a little quiet now and just let you watch as each layer builds, the nose starts to take on new life.
final drawing. I apologise for the quality of the camera as it does increase the contrast and saturation of the drawing a little, but I will pop some high quality photos I took of the final nose at the end of this video in a moment. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learnt some new techniques that can help you to improve your colour work. I'll be making more videos in the future, so do pop your suggestions in the comments below. I'll also put all the materials I use for this tutorial in the description for you if you're interested. Um, and if you'd like to check out any more of my work, you can pop over to my website at www.artistrachelcard.com.